I've been very busy with the wire up gun the last couple of days, but um, everything is working. And so I can give you an update and show you the new board running. So here's the new board here. This um, is the wire wrap board. If you um, watch per watching previous videos, it's really just a re-implementation of what I had done on that breadboard over there. Um, so on a quick tour, um, we have the main uh, clock oscillator here. Um, I've got the 6502 processor and then six, two 6522 um, interface adapters. Um, one of them is wired directly into this um, um, S micro SD card breakout. Um, and this one uh, is for, for general I.O. Here's a 6551 um, serial port implementation with its own um, oscillator and that runs out to a USB adapter here. Um, this is 32K of static RAM and 32K of EEPROM space. Um, and then this is the um, generic array logic, um, the pr programmable logic device that implements the um, memory decoding. Um, <clears throat> so in comparison to the older board over there, um, it's largely compatible, but slightly different. The differences are first that I've got two 6522s rather than just the one that I had there. Um, and the other is that because I've um, redone the address decoding logic, I'm able to get a much more precise um, a much more precise version of the, uh, the, the address decoding. And that means that I can uh, use 28k out of the 32k of uh, ROM here rather than just the, uh, just the 16k that I was able to use in the previous uh, board. Otherwise, though, the address layout is the same as much as I can um, so that any software that ran on the old board should be able to run on the new board. And in fact, this ROM um, is just running the same, um, the same software, the, the um, disk manager and fourth implementation that was running on the old board. I just keep these numbers on my ROM so I can tell the difference between what's, um, what's, on, what's on one and what's on another. Um, if we turn the board over, you'll be able to see what's been keeping me cross-eyed for the last couple of days. So this is all the, the, all the wiring on the underside of the board here. The yellow wires are the address bus, the blue wires are the data bus, the white wires are the control lines. And there is some green and red in there as well for um, I.O. and for bypass capacitors and, and pull-ups. Um, I managed pretty well to, I managed not to make too many um, screw-ups wiring that all together. Um, um, I did miss a couple of things. Um, I missed some that were on my wiring plan and my wiring plan had missed a couple of things as well. So um, I finished the wiring yesterday, but this morning the process of bringing the board up, um, it basically involved tracking down the last couple of things that were wrong and, um, and, and fixing them. So let's power this on and set it going. Um, I will uh, have some connect up the USB here, first of all, um, and then we can um, add in the power. Now the way our power is working just now is I'm still just powering it from my um, lab power supply, my bench power supply. Um, there's space on the board here obviously for a proper power regulator which is what I'm going to do next um, and then we'll uh, then it'll be more more portable but for now this is working fine. Uh, turn it on and there we go. Now the one other thing I've made a different made a change about, um, let's just move this around a little bit and you'll see the um, See the computer over here. Uh, um, this board is running at a four megahertz crystal rather than the two megahertz crystal that was on the solar spread board. So the solar spread board wasn't really being, we're going to be able to do much faster than two megahertz, four megahertz. Um, is what I've got on here that would never have worked on the solderless breadboard. And in fact, um, 4 megahertz is limited by the 6551, which is a 4 megahertz part, but I bet I could run it faster if I really wanted. Um, and since, the, since all my I.O. to the SD card is actually just bit banging, um, it means that um, a faster processor is not only um, doing computation faster, but actually doing I.O. faster as well. So if I just... Uh, start my Mandelbrot program on there. Um, you can sort of see it off in the distance, drawing Mandelbrot patterns and, um, and running considerably faster than the, than the old computer. This runs in just a little over a minute, whereas the last one took like two and a half. So, um, so this is working very well. I am very pleased that my uh, you know, first efforts at, um, at, at wire wrapping 
um, paid off so paid off so quickly. Um, obviously, I made the thing slightly easier for myself. You will see this is a, a really big board. It doesn't really need to be nearly as big as this, but um, that way I was just giving myself lots of space so that I could get in there with my soldering iron when I needed to and get in with a wire wrap gun and not give myself, not make things any more difficult for myself than, um, uh, than I had to. And frankly, this was about as uh, detailed work as I could manage to do. Um, but I am just very pleased to have something that's more robust than the, um, than the old version. And so now I can, uh, I can um, do a few more things. So I'm going to put the power supply on here. Um, this header is not yet connected up for the second 6522. Um, but then the other thing I want to do is put a header on here for a, a video board. I put video, some video control signals out of the, um, out of the address decoding logic. I've got myself a TMS 9918A, um, uh, video chip. Um, and so I want to play around and see if I can get a video card running on here as well.